Welcome, everyone. Today, we're looking at attack plugins, how they expand attacks capabilities, improve situational awareness, and tailor the attack environment. This is going to be an updated session from last year's meetup. But this time around, we're looking at the updated attack CIV SDK 5.5, and a lot has changed, mostly for the better. We'll again look at the Hello World plugin that comes with the SDK. And as this is a drone meetup, we're going to read some telemetry data from a drone and then display it in a plugin. We'll create a plugin from scratch using the old style or legacy plugin template, as well as the new plugin template style. Quick refresher for those that don't know anything about ATAC. Plugins operate on top of the base ATAC application, which is available on Google Play. To get started, you must first install ATAC itself, followed by any plugins you wish to use. Plugins extend ATTAC's core functionality, giving developers the ability to customize the platform. The plugin ecosystem is diverse, offering tools for sensor integration, data analysis, mission planning, and more. By using plugins, users can connect ATTAC with other systems and tools, greatly enhancing its flexibility and overall utility. Here's the base ATTAC app, uh, which you'll need to install first. You can find the Google Play link in the resources slide. Once it's set up, you can install any plugins you want to extend its functionality. There are currently 30 ATAC plugins listed on TAC.gov, such as the UAS tool. This allows an ATAC user to fly DJI, PX4, Parrot, and Autel drones. Um, this is a plugin we recently created, the aptly named Weather IoT plugin. It reads in data from a Rainweather IoT weather station. It's from last month's meetup where we talked about the process of signing ATAC plugins so you can get them into Google Play. ATAC can operate in a client-server configuration or as a mesh network of clients. Um, you can multicast over the internet or on a local network. Many folks use devices like Gotenna to stay connected if there's no internet available. We can also have a more traditional client-server architecture where the TAC server controls the communication between clients. Let's take a look at a simple Hello World plugin. This will help us get our environment set up and see how everything fits together. Here's what the Hello World plugin looks like. It's not a traditional Hello World as it has a significant amount of functionality all in one app, but it is the first place to go when you want to know how to add any functionality such as heat maps or sensor integration into a plugin. Here's the steps we need to take to get the Hello World example working. Download the ATAC SDK from TAC.gov, unzip the package and create a plugins directory. Copy the Hello World plugin from the samples directory into the newly created plugins directory. Set the Gradle plugin version to 8.9.0. Set the Gradle version to 8.13. Change the build variant to SivDebug edit the configuration launch options to make it not try to launch an activity. And finally, run the app configuration to launch ATAC with your plugin. The ATAC SDK no longer lives on GuideTub. Um, you can only get it from TAC.gov. Log into TAC.gov, go to Products, and choose ATAC CIV from the drop down. Scroll down to the downloadable resources and then click on the Developer Resources tab as shown. You do not need to be in a US government job to get a TAC.gov account. Anyone in the US or Canada can get one. But I'm not sure about other countries. There are several references in the documentation to git.tac.gov which does require a US government job to access. But for what we're doing, we don't need anything from git.tac.gov. Unzip the SDK and take a look at the samples directory. As you can see, there are lots of different types of plugin examples. We're going to start with Hello World. Create a plugins folder at the top level and put a copy of the Hello World plugin directory into it. While you're here, we need to install the developer version of the ATAC APK from the SDK directory on your phone. Email it to yourself on your phone or use an ADB command to get it on the phone. Here's the first big change from the old 4.x SDK. We can use an up-to-date version of Android Studio. I'm on the latest version at time of print, which is Android Studio Narwhal. Make sure you're on Gradle version 8.13 and Gradle plugin 8.9.0. Depending on how your environment is set up, you're going to need to run the Gradle plugin upgrade assistant and either upgrade or downgrade to get the right version over on the left-hand side of Android Studio, click on the build variants and change the build variant to Civ Debug. Because our ATAC plugin sits on top of a base Android app, we need to click on Edit Configurations to change the default behavior from launching an activity to launching nothing. 
so change the launch options to launch nothing. You can also rename the app if you want to Hello World plugin. Um, another big change with the new SDK is that we don't have to worry about the Java version. The ATAC plugin development guide that comes with the SDK says to use Java 11, but I'm using the Android Studio version of Java, and that works fine. Open the plugin in Android Studio and build. I usually run the app on my physical phone rather than on an emulator. Um, the ATAC plugins still use um, old school XML layouts and Java. However, there is no reason why you can't write plugins in Kotlin, and we're going to do that um, in the next example. But unfortunately, as yet, we can't use Compose instead of XML layouts. For the second example, we're going to start with the plugin template. There are three different versions, the legacy version, the new version, and the Compose version. We're going to use the legacy plugin template first, and then the new plugin style. I was hoping to use the Compose plugin template, but that keeps crashing, so we're going to have to skip that. Here's the finished product for our Mavs Decay Attack plugin. It's a classic plugin with the map on the left-hand side and a pull-out menu on the right-hand side, which is showing the latitude and longitude of our drone. This telemetry or position is coming from our PX4 simulator. Here's the steps to get our example working. Copy plugin template legacy sample into the plugins directory. Convert the Java code to Kotlin. Make sure the Gradle plugin, Gradle version, build variants, and app configuration are set up similar to the Hello World example. Copy the code from MFSDK Java Android client to set up our Mav SDK server. The link to the original code is in the resources slide. Change UDP port in the code to 1.555 SU. Add Mav SDK libraries to the build.gradle file. Configure and run PX4 simulator. Open the inbound UDP and outbound TCP ports on your firewall, and finally run app. In the plugin examples folder copy, uh, the plugin template to the plugins folder where we already copied over hello world. I renamed it MAVSDK. Uh, Convert the plugin template drop down receiver and plugin template map component Java files to Kotlin choose file, code, and convert Java file to Kotlin for our two files. When you open the plugin directory in Android Studio, you should see the following um, in the top left hand corner. You can see the um, there are only two files for the drop-down receiver, which is our layout and the map component. In case we want to interact with map, right below that you can see the main layout, which is where we're going to put our text box. This is classic Android development and not anything strictly ATAC plugin. Edit the configuration to change the plugin name to MyVSDK plugin and change the launch activity change to nothing. The bottom arrow is showing the command when everything builds, although it's not actually doing anything as we haven't added any code. Open the main layout.xml and add a text view to display our position. Add the position string in the strings.xml file. Our layout will now display the static text plugin template and a hard-coded latitude and longitude. Next, we need to add some code to make it dynamic. OK, there are a couple things going on here. Um, first, we added a position parameter in the class definition, and we added code to read the position and change the text view in the layout to the updated value. In the highlighted init code block, sets up a coroutine, which ensures that the logic runs asynchronously on a background thread. Within the coroutine, the code listens for changes to a state flow named position. Each time the flow emits a new value, the Lambda receives the latest latitude and longitude coordinates and updates the UI. Convert the plugin template map component into Kotlin 2. The Mavi SDK server will be in the ATAC or map context and not in the dropdown receiver. Add the variables for the position at line 17 and 18 and update the call to the drop down receiver to send the position of the drone. Add the Mav SDK dependencies to the build.gradle file. Back in our plugin template map component, add code to check if the Mav SDK server is running, and if it isn't, then start it. The remaining code is copied from the Mavi SDK Java Android client in the resources converting to Kotlin as we go. Change the Mavi SDK server port to listen for UDP messages on port 14550. The highlighted code shows how to read the position, update at the logs, and also update the position value in the plugin. As yet, we don't have a drone to talk to. Here's a quick way to uh, set one up on uh, Windows Systems Linux on Windows 11, clone the PX4 code, start the simulator by running the make command, 
And then when the simulator starts, use the Mavlink start command to send messages to your phone. Make sure to change the IP address to your phone's IP and make sure the phone on computer are on the same network. Open Windows Defender Firewall and under Advanced Settings, create an inbound rule and an outbound rule. Open the outgoing TCP port 4560 and the incoming UDP port for 14550. Once we have the PX4 simulator running, click on Run in Android Studio to launch the plugin back in the ATAC app. Click on Plugins and you'll see the list of plugins. Load the Mavi SDK, which is showing up as the plugin template. When you run it, you'll see the updating position in the plugin. But wait, there's more. The Mav SDK attack example in the resources also shows how to create our example here using the new style plugin templates. The key difference is there are no longer map component and drop down receiver classes. Previously, the map component served as the plugin's entry point and was responsible for interacting with the map, but that's been replaced by a plugin template class. Previously, we would treat the map component as the entry point for the plugin and use it to um, control the map and the drop down receiver to control the pullout menu. Now we just have the default um, plugin template class, which we can rename to our own plugin name. The plugin template class is the entry point for the plugin and is where we can initialize our plugin and set up any necessary components. We can now use the plugin template and the iHostUI service to implement our designs in the attack UI. In this code, the user clicks on the toolbar button. Uh, and the show pane method will be called. This is where we can implement our UI to show different pullout menus depending on what button was pushed. We can declare our own UI classes and views similar to previous dropdown receivers, so we can display them. Here we are inflating an XML layout from the resources and setting it up as a pane. The pane is what I was calling a pullout menu in the earlier examples. The pane builder allows us to specify how the pane should be displayed, including its size and position on the screen. We could expand it our view into its own class, but for simplicity's sake, we are just using the plugin layout inflator to inflate the layout directly in the plugin template class. Um, we can then just use the default show pane function to show our custom view for the latitude and longitude position. If I wanted to create another view in the same way, I could create another XML layout file and switch between them in the show pane method. This allows us to have multiple views and switch between them as needed. The code can be found in the resources. Finally, here's all the resources that we touched on. The first link is to the new anti-gravity drone from Insta360. Second link is the ATAC base app followed by the TACOT gov link. Next is the Android client Mavs DK code, which we used in our second demo. And finally, we have the updated code for the legacy plugins, um, the new plugin style, so you can play with it yourself. If you liked our video, then there's more where that came from. Scan the code and join our newsletter to stay connected with the latest innovations from Reese.